So, the first thing you need to know about JavaScript is where does it run? JavaScript runs or is interpreted inside of the web browser, and that's this guy right here. Now, there's two types of languages. Don't really worry about it right now, but there's interpreted and compiled. Interpreted means that the code that you're reading that text is actually read as fast as possible by the computer and run. Compiled is they take your programming language that you wrote and make it less readable, but more readable by the machine. So you go from English to zero and ones. There's a lot of different types of languages and steps in the middle here, and each language gets closer and closer to the machine. The theory is the easier it is for the machine to read, the faster the code. It's not always the case, but that's how it generally goes. The challenge with lower level languages is that it harder to learn by a lot of more people, right? So there's a lot of smart people, you know, and medium people who can definitely learn interpreted, you know, languages. But as you get closer to metal, it gets hard, right? That's the theory anyway. And so what they've done is they've made higher level languages that are more like English, easier to read, higher level constructs, blah, 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 right? That's the thought. And it's not really always the case, right? We're going to use a higher level language called JavaScript, which is interpreted. Now there's some compiling behind the scenes. But the, for the most part, the code you see is the code that's running, right? Which is, which is great, makes it easy to learn, easy to debug. So here we go. Now, if you're on a Mac or PC, you can go to the developer tools the same way. You'll see this little menu item. It can change in your version of Chrome. Google does it all the time. They update it without telling you. Because uh, it updates in the background. You click this guy, you'll go down to something that says tools. And inside here, you'll see developer tools. All we care about for now is the JavaScript console, okay? That'll open up down here, and you can size it up and down, whatever size you want. Click the console tab. It might be a tab, might be text. They change that a lot, too. What we're concerned about is the console tab, and you should see the cursor blinking right there. If you don't, sometimes this gets stuck, but for the most part, as long as you click on console, it's there. You can move the console or use it in other tabs as well by clicking the console tab, right? So it'll pop it up. For now, we're just going to go to the console actual tab itself, and you can code from there. You can also utilize the Alt Windows keys I or Alt, uh, I, forget, I forget what key it is on Mac, um, command I think. And that'll bring it up as well if you have Chrome in focus, okay? So the first thing to do to play with JavaScript is you can write some HTML in JavaScript, open it in the browser and see it run, or you can use this little interactive console that Chrome just so happens to have for you. We're gonna use that first because it's simple, less configuration, and it's a known thing to set up a hello world. So here we go. I'm going to type in console.log, quotes or single quotes, whatever your thing is. I recommend double. Hello world. Don't forget, you don't have to do the semicolon all the time, but it's, it's important. Hit enter. Hello world, right? Don't worry about the undefined. What we're concerned with is we ran JavaScript, so you just ran JavaScript. Congratulations, you're now a coder. Next up we're going to start doing with some variables. So let's define a variable. All variables are where you store things. So we're going to do uh, my name equals Jesse. Now, if any of you have been through Algebra 1, 2, or whatever, this may look very familiar. You have a variable on the left, and it's set to a value, right? So we're going to say var x equals 8. Not 98, 8. Okay, then we're going to say console log x. What is x equal? 8, right? We store, we've stored a value of 8 in the variable x, right? That's what variables do. They store things. You can store all kinds of things in variables. Let's store uh, my name. My name is Jesse. And then the way we look at variables is to print them out or console log them out or print them to the console. I know it's, it's weird. So we'll say my name, Jesse, right? So that variable is stored in this uh, set of variables that we've created. We now have X and Y. Now console allows you to do a couple things. I want to show you. You can actually print out multiple variables. So we'll say console log X and my name. Notice how I use a comma. The space doesn't matter. I like to do it for readability purposes. Some people like to code like this, and that's okay, right? Whatever, both works, but you can do whatever. Notice it printed out eight, and the 
my name is Jesse, okay? So, that's the basic of variables. Variables allow you to store data. You can store all kinds of data types depending on the language. And that brings us to data types. Let's talk about data types. So, there are numbers, which we've just seen in eight. There are strings, which we've just seen with Jesse. There's also something called Booleans, such as, notice I put a var in front of everything to define a variable. It's just how you do it. This space is important. You can't do var my name because that's one word. You have to do var my name. So we'll say var is it too early in the day. It's always too early in the day. My circadian rhythms are nighttime. So say true. Now we'll log it out. Console.log. Is it too early in the day? Notice how it gave me a code hint. I pressed right on the arrow key so I don't have to type as much. Again, most programmers have done a great way to speed this process of automation along. We're lazy. We don't want to have to do things we don't have to do. It's for efficiency's sake. So we'll close it with a parenthesis. Sorry, a right parenthesis. My bad. Hit enter. True. Right? Now, there's one other Boolean. It's true or false. Booleans mean true or false, right? So we'll say, is it currently nighttime? Console.log. False, right? So there you go, true and false. You've got numbers, you got strings, you got booleans. You also have something called an array. An array is a list. It stores a list of things. Some languages require you to define what those things are. Languages like JavaScript don't care. You can put whatever you want. You can put strings next to numbers. You can put cows next to cheese. They do not care, which is cool. There's a cost of speed, but we're not concerned about that. So let's make our first array or list. Now, let me back up and just point something out here. It took me six months to wrap my head around, when I was a beginning coder, arrays. I had been coding for about a year, and arrays were in a very advanced concept. So if you get this in the next, you're awesome. If you don't get it, keep trying. It took me eight months. If it takes you two weeks, you're still awesome, right? So here's a list. We're going to say a list of my favorite things. My fave, my fave things, yo. They are, notice I do a left bracket, right? We're gonna call it um, coffee, the number 34, because that's how old I am. It's my favorite favorite age. Um, how about keys? No, keys are not my favorite thing. Cheese, I do like cheese. I don't eat much dairy anymore, but I do enjoy cheese. Um, programming, programming is pretty legit in games and uh oh i like four and five this is the age of my daughters and yeah so that's an array it's a list of things right now i've done something called initialize the array that means i created it or i constructed it right you'll hear people say constructors initialize in it they're all the same thing they're just cinnamon synonyms cinnamon 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 and cinnamon there's synonyms for the same thing. You're making a variable, okay? So I'll hit enter, and let's log out our new array, my fave things. It's also, an array and a list is also a synonym. They, it depends on the language, but same thing. So as you can see, that's my array. Now, arrays offer a variety of ways of interacting with the thing. So numbers, and um, strings and booleans and arrays all have special features, but arrays have a lot of special features. There's a variety of things you need to know about array and interacting with it and changing it. So let's do that. Let's say um, how many things are in my favorite array. Console.log, my fave things array, dot length. Length is a way to determine how long the array is or how many things are in the array. Seven. Right? Seven is also one of my favorite things because I like the number seven. I think it's lucky. However, notice it's not in the array, but the array's length. Oh, tricky. Nah. Coffee. So, that is a, you'll notice I did a dot length. You're going to learn a lot about dots, but don't worry about it right now. We'll focus on that. Another thing is we can do something such as 
remove things from the array. So let's let's do that. Pop. Notice I used two parentheses. It's a method. It's very similar to what we've been doing the entire time with console.log. You have objects with methods, and we'll get to objects in just a minute. Right? I just popped it out of the array. I removed the last item in the array. So we'll say console dot log my fave things, yo. I forgot the semicolon. Oops. JavaScript's pretty forgiving. That's why a lot of people like it. Look, I got rid of the five. I popped the last thing out of the array. Pop returns it, show me what it was. Now when I print it again, it's, it's gone. We could pop forever until the array's empty, right? You could do that as well. So that's the four main data types. Let's talk about, and we'll save object to last. So let's talk about null. Null is null. Now JavaScript, in the meaning of null, is supposed to mean nothing. So rather than say nothing, they said null. Right? I don't know if this is like nil, like the Brits, they always say like nil and stuff, but whatever. Null is nothing. It's synonymous for nothing. The problem is JavaScript has multiple ways of defining nothing. So it could be an empty string. It could be undefined. It could be undefined the string, right? It gets really, really confusing. Now, if you're curious about where can I learn more about how nothing is confusing, <laughs> did you catch that? You can read uh, Douglas Crockford's book, JavaScript, The Good Parts. He goes all over the difference in intricacies of null and undefined. We're just gonna cover the basics of that. So here we go. My fave things yo equals null. Null is a keyword, it means you can type it, it's okay, right? It actually does something magical. That's what keywords mean. So now we'll, con we'll print out our array again. My fave things yo, it's now null. Right? Good. Now, what is undefined? My fave things, yo, equals undefined. Undefined is also a keyword that means nothing, but it's a little different. Console.log. I confirm. Console. Undefined, right? It's not null. It's undefined. The big theory is that null means nothing, and you explicitly set it to nothing. You said I, that is nothing. Undefined says, dude, like no one told me if it was nothing or something, so it's undefined. Like, I don't know. All right, so that's undefined. It only really matters in equality, and we'll get to that for operators. So let's talk about objects, and then I'll show you some of those operators. The last thing and the most magical thing about JavaScript and where mm, 70%, I love making up percentages. 70% of your time is spent making and dealing with objects. Objects are things, right, or, or pieces of data. So you have very primitive data types, such as numbers, or arrays, strings, booleans, but objects are magical. So let's do something called a person, bar person equals bracket bracket. Now these are those, not the bracket brackets like that, but the, uh, you know, I don't even know what those things are called. So that's a person, console.log, person. We now have ourselves an object, voila, right? These brackets define the beginning and end of an object. So you always, you notice there's a consistency with open and closing. You open and close parentheses, you open and close brackets for arrays. For objects, you do the same thing, okay? This is the different symbols. Objects are a complex variable. That means that they can contain with other variables within it, right? Now arrays can have a list of variables, but it's not really inside them per se. Objects actually have those properties defined on them. You can call them slots, you can call them properties, whatever. JavaScript, the language has scientific definitions for these, but most people don't follow it, so I'm not either. So let's give a person dot a name. Let's say use a dot to make up a property on it. A name is, let's say, you know, let's be a little more specific. First name, Jesse. Voila. Next up, person. Last name. Learn how to spell warden. Is Jesse Warden. Cool. Now let's press up. It's a way to previously cycle through things you've already written so you don't have to type it again, right? Speed, people, speed. You can do a lot of writing. You gotta automate it as fast as possible. Console log at person. Aha, now you can see the object has two properties. The properties are of data type string, 
right? Notice the quotes, Chrome in this version, because Chrome changes a lot, it'll actually auto update. In this version of Chrome, the strings are designated as red, right? So that helps you see that he has two properties, last name and first name. Now you'll notice that I did a dot first name, right? You could also do this, person age. Notice how I use brackets, right? That's another way to do it. Equals 34. Cycle up. Now I have an age property. That is a number, right? You'll notice that I they, they do both do the same thing. Why do they have two ways to do things? Well, this allows you to dynamically access it versus writing it by hand. What does that mean, dynamic? You'll see in a minute when we get to operators how you can dynamically access all kinds of things. So these basic concepts that you're learning and practicing are used by everything you do, right? So these are important. They seem benign at first, but trust me, you're gonna use all of this stuff. So that is an object, the basics of it. We'll get into some more advanced object things later. But the cool thing is it's one variable that stores a bunch of stuff. That's where objects are useful, right? This gets into classes and advanced concepts of programming.